you just got to see me make a mistake. Um, I have a shirt that I pre-soaked in soda ash solution and I was going to be dyeing that and I forgot. So the shirt that I just started dyeing, I'm going to have to set that aside and, and start with this one because I always pre-soak <clears throat> my shirts in soda ash solution and let them sit for a day or so so that the excess moisture uh, evaporates. I don't want a real wet shirt when I'm dyeing. I want one that's just damp. But it has to have the soda ash in order for the dye to react and, and become a part of the fiber. So, scratch that part. Here's the shirt that I'm going to be dyeing now. And again, I'm, I'm going to do the yellow here. And actually, yeah, I'm starting out and I'm putting the dye starting in the middle of the section. And I'm working my way up to the center. And just letting it flow out. Nice and easy until I finish the entire section. And I will be flipping the shirt over to dye the other side when I'm done with all the colors on this side. Okay, that's the yellow. And rinse the gloves, and the next one is orange. I'm going to move over here. And I rotate this so that I can again start in the middle, work my way up, and over dye a little bit of the yellow with the orange. Oops. And I wanted to mention, I just had a drip off of this, which shouldn't be happening because I use um, plumber's Teflon tape around the threads of the squeeze bottle, and that helps. Uh, so that I don't have a lot of drippage, which again can give you unwanted results. In this particular case, it happened to drip right at the base of the orange, so I'm okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this section. And because the shirt is damp from the soda ash solution, the dyes will wick out uh, and go beyond where I'm applying it, which is, you know, one of the ideal conditions when you have uh, just enough dampness to where everything flows together. It's not too wet, so it doesn't dilute the dye. Uh, if you try dyeing on a dry shirt, bone dry, a lot of times it'll bubble up and it doesn't flow. So I've, I've come to the point of, of knowing that if I just have it damp without being too wet or too dry, I get a better coverage. Next color here is Scarlet. Yeah. Just letting it flow down. And I don't do this real fast. If you do it too fast, you lose control of how much dye is coming out and then you can, again, get unwanted results. But it's all a matter of just learning what works, you know. Um, when I first started dyeing, my results weren't exactly what I wanted. but. You know, practice makes perfect, as they say. Okay, now I'm going around and I'm going to work from green to blue to purple for the remainder of the shirt. And as you can see, it can go pretty quick. It doesn't take very long, but, you know, do take your time as you're, as you're learning if you've never done this before. Obviously, if you know what you're doing, I'm just going to, you know, hopefully add a few little tricks to your repertoire. Uh, but I know... Uh, being able to see somebody do something, I think, really helps in understanding how to do it. And uh, I've had better results learning from video than I did from the written word or picture, so that's why I'm trying to continue the legacy. Okay, here's my blue. And I've got my label there, but it's not necessarily going to die too much. I don't really care. I'm just working the section here and letting some of it back dye. And my last color is deep purple. And when I get done with this, what I'm going to do is put fresh paper towels down, flip the shirt, and repeat this on the back side. It won't take nearly as much dye because a lot of uh, the fabric will have been uh, dyed by this uh, layer, but you know I, do, I don't want a lot of white 
I tend to, to like to have just a very little bit of white grass. Okay. So, done with new paper towels. And I gently pick it up and flip it. And then wipe up my mask. Oops, my trash can's too far away. And I have rags here to wipe with. Always helps to have everything laid out and ready to go so you don't have any disasters. Okay, so we're back to the yellow. And as you can, I, I don't know if you can see this very well, but the back side is not nearly as tidy as, as the front side as far as the folds go. Uh, so I have to be a little more careful making sure that uh, I get into the crevices and don't have any areas that are trapped by foldovers that occur on the top side. But again, I'm just following the same colors that I used on the front. Now there are variations you can do on this that I have done in the past where maybe I'll use one set of colors on the front and then a different uh, shading of the same colors on the back. Uh, light shades on the front, dark shades on the back, vice versa. And it gives a little more interest uh, and, and color variation. Uh, and again, I've used the same, the squirrel pattern with like a three color combination. Um, it doesn't work as well with less than three colors. Uh, and, and it doesn't work real good if you try and do four because you've got six sections. But that, you know, you don't have to stick to the six. I just do that because it's the easiest for me. Um, so definitely experiment. That's one of the things that's helped me a lot is, you know, looking at what I see other people do, but then doing the what if. You know, I wonder what would happen if I did this. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, uh, the more you play and the more you experiment, um, the, the more great results you're going to come up with just by learning how things work. Okay. Two more colors and I'll be ready to wrap it. And what I'm going to be doing is wrapping this in plastic and letting it batch for about 24 hours. Um, it's a nice warm day out. I'm sure I'm going to get great results. And I will uh, rinse, wash, and take pictures of the final result and add that in at the end so that you can see how it comes out. Got a little tuck here that I need to kind of manipulate. Okay, I think I just about got it. So what I'm going to do now is have this big roll of plastic. Let's see if I can get this to roll out. I got this at the local big box store. Got enough plastic in here to last me for another 10 years. And I get this spread out as much as I can. And then just place the shirt in the middle. And you can use just regular plastic wrap from the grocery store. You don't have to go to the big box store and buy a huge one. But I did that because uh, there was a time when I was doing a lot of direct application dyeing and you need to be able to wrap it up and, and batch it. And so I just figured it was a good idea to have a lot so that I didn't run out in the middle of a project. Okay, that's, uh, that's what I do with rainbow swirls. And as I said, I will you know uh, post a picture uh, afterwards as soon as I've had this batched and, and laundered. And I hope you give this a try. And I hope the, the, the tips that I've been able to include are helpful to you. Thanks, bye-bye. Okay, here's the shirt that I dyed yesterday. I wanted to give you a chance to see how it turned out. A um, couple things I wanted to point out. Uh, remember yesterday I was talking about how I like to uh, flow the dyes together in the areas that are adjacent to each other. And that gives me more of a, a color uh, blend. So I've got like blue to blue green to green. Um, and it also eliminates some of the white that you would get if you were trying to be very uh, careful about keeping your colors separate in each of the segments that you're dyeing. Uh, I do have some white areas up here in between. Uh, it kind of adds to the design. 
So it's, it's a, a balance between having enough color and having a little bit of a contrast. Uh, truth in lending, I got a smudge. I uh, don't know how that happened, probably where I was touching it at one point. And uh, as you may remember, I was rinsing my gloves very carefully, but it still happens. There's just no way to avoid it completely. Uh, I'm going to step in here and turn this around so you can see the back as well. And one of the things I wanted to, to remind you of, when I was folding the shirt yesterday, I mentioned that I like to put my center off off balance so that it's not smack in the middle of the shirt. It gives a little more visual interest uh, and I don't think too many people really like to have a circle starting from their belly and working outward. Uh, at any rate, uh, I hope that this has been uh, useful to you and, and that the, the things that I demonstrated yesterday will help you in, in being able to do a better rainbow swirl.